Here we are going to take on one of the most feared jobs in the printmaking studio, sharpening your tools for relief printing. Sharp tools are the key to ensuring you get the most accurate kinds of cuts and that you don't hurt yourself. People seem to think that sharp tools are dangerous, but in fact, dull tools are dangerous, particularly when it comes to carving lino or wood blocks, or your kitchen knives for that matter. So I've got a couple of tools here that have not seen any sort of sharpening for years and years. They were pulled out of the back of the supply room here at the studio, and we're going to use them for this demo and get them back in tip-top shape. So you can see I'm really struggling as I'm using the V-gouge and then the wider U-gouge. It's actually not in terrible condition, but that, that skinnier U-gouge was pretty rough. So let's get started. There are dozens and dozens of ways to sharpen tools, and everyone who sharpens will sharpen slightly differently. This is how we do it at the University of Regina. I've got a couple of these wet stones, and uh, they have profiles built into them to accommodate most of the basic kinds of shapes that we may be coming across here in the studio. The one I just held up is a 400 grit stone. These are water stones, that's why they're sitting in a tray of water, and this is a 1000 grit stone. You typically only ever need to use the 1000 grit unless you're dealing with really beat up tools, in which case you can start with the 400. Most of the time though, you're only gonna need to strop your tools, and that's where we use this thing, which is the slip strop from FlexCut. This thing is a piece of wood also with a bunch of different profiles on it and some bits of leather glued to them and a stick of honing compound. We'll see how that works in just a second. We're going to start with the thousand grit whetstone. So this was sitting in a tray of water. We keep the lid on it so it's always ready to use. And it's a handy little thing because you can take the bottom kind of holder off and then you have a flat surface as well, which is useful for different kinds of tools. We're going to start off with our smaller U-gouge, called a U-gouge because the shape of the tool is like a U. Very clever, I know. So our stone, which has been soaking, is wet, and I'm going to find the profile on this particular stone that best matches my tool. And applying a little bit of pressure and keeping the tool on an angle, which we'll look at more in just a moment here, I'm going to go back and forth. I'm putting a little bit of pressure, as I mentioned, and ensuring that I'm maintaining this kind of an angle on the tool. A lot of tools like this, and knives for that matter, are at about a 15 degree angle. And there are jigs and that sort of thing that can help you get there. But really, once you figure this out by feel, you'll understand how you have to lean your tool in order to ensure that you are actually sharpening it. I might go back and forth a hundred times before moving on to either the next grit or the stropping. And if my stone starts to get dry, I can always just drip a little extra water on top of it. You'll note that I've got this on the rubber backing material so that it doesn't slide around. One of the things I didn't just show you there, but is a very handy tip for beginners and advanced sharpeners alike, is to take a Sharpie, and here I've got a blue Sharpie, but it could be a black Sharpie or a red Sharpie, and I'm going to just gently draw on the underside of the tool. This will tell me very clearly whether or not I'm sharpening with the right angle, and if I've sharpened the entire section of the tool that needs sharpening. So I can pull my tool back and forth several times and then assess. Here I'm going to switch to a V-gouge. Now, a V-gouge is essentially two flat blades set at an angle to one another. So I can use the back of my whetstone here. And if the whetstone is getting a little dry, I can add a little water to it. But essentially, I'm going to go for a similar sort of angle on the whetstone and push back and forth with a small amount of pressure, maybe 50 or 100 times. At some point, I will then possibly add a little extra water, flipped to the other side, and repeat. The little Sharpie trick works with the V-gouge as well. So here is the slightly wider U-gouge, and we're not going to go too far into it, but it's the exact same process. I'm going to look for a section on our wet stone here with the right profile or something 
close enough. You'll see the one on the left is a better option because it allows me to push the blade back and forth and also rock it slightly side to side. This is a motion that you will just have to figure out for yourself, regardless of the kind of stone that you're using. But what I'm doing here is I'm applying pressure downwards, but also slightly to the right and slightly to the left to ensure that I'm getting the entire outside edge of my U-gouge. And if there's any doubt that you're removing material from your tools, you only have to look at this kind of grayish slurry on the stone. That's metal that you're removing. Okay, so we're done the 1000 grit. Had the tool been in really rough shape, we would have started with the 400 and then moved on. And now, having dried our tool with a cloth, careful not to cut ourselves, we're going to move on to the stropping process. So I'm going to set down the flex strop on the table and I'm going to look for some profiles that are most appropriate for the tools that I'm sharpening. And before I use the strop, I'm going to apply some of this yellow stuff. This is a waxy, chalky material that is a honing compound. So you need to make sure you get it into all the places that you're going to be running your tool. And it's mildly abrasive. And what this does is it puts a polish or a mirror finish on the outside of your tool. You don't really need a mirror finish on the outside of your tool, but the smoother it is, the less resistance the tool will have when it comes time to actually cut. And as a result, your tool stay sharper for longer. You'll note that I'm not pushing the tool at all. I'm only pulling it back. And if you have nice sharp tools to begin with, you may only need to apply a small amount of compound and then strop your tool five or 10 times. I don't have to push too hard and I'm just pulling, as I say, towards me. And that should put a mirror on the bottom of my tool. Now, the last thing I need to do to my tool is to remove a potential burr that will build up on the, if you think of the inside of the U of that tool. And that is a very, very thin little bit of metal that builds up as a result of the sharpening. And we're going to strop that away to, again, ensure that our tool is in tip-top condition. So I flipped my strop over, applied some compound, and lay my tool down on the most appropriate profile and pull it back five to 10 times. Here I'm going to repeat with the wider U-gouge and I'm going to look for a wider area on the strop and apply some honing compound and strop the tool by pulling it towards me five to ten times. I'll flip it over again and remove the burr. So taking care of the V-gouge, which as you recall is basically two sharp edges set at an angle to one another, I'm going to use the leather on this particular strop. I don't need to get into using the uh, angled profiles. I just need a big flat profile. And believe it or not, leather also does the trick here. So some compound rubbed onto the leather strop. And just like when we were sharpening, only I'm just pulling towards me. I'm never pushing the tool. And I go five or ten times on one side and I may need to add a little more compound, flip to the other side, and I'm almost done. The last thing to do is to remove the burr just like we did for our other gouges. So let's test out our tools. They're so much better. I can tell that they're sharp. They were really dull before. I'm not struggling to remove lino. I can make curves. I feel like I'm in control. So now that my tools are nice and sharp, I may not have to go back to the whetstone at all, or I may not go back to the whetstone until well after this project is done. Keeping that flex strop nearby and stropping my tools a couple of times during a carving session keeps them in tip-top shape. So there you have it. You never have to be afraid to sharpen your tools.